My name is Susie Neese, Suzanne Elizabeth Neese, actually. And I'm from Alexandria, Virginia, but I live in Los Angeles, in Redondo Beach, California. My journey in yoga started probably, I come from a dance background initially, and my dad owned a gym growing up. And so I sort of was a gym rat and a dancer. And I thought yoga initially was really hard and super boring. And I went to one yoga class and never went back. And then I got injured dancing. I herniated a disc and couldn't dance. And so I was really not fun to be around. And I did all the physical therapy and tried all these different um, ways to, to uh, rehab. And then I went back to yoga. And uh, I swear that yoga saved a lot of lives that day. Not just my own, but anyone else I was in contact with because I was really so, so cranky. And, uh, and it was a flowing class. It was more of an Ashtanga-based class. And I had the freedom to feel like I was moving again. And so that was my first like real shift back into yoga. And then it just kept finding me. Like I lived in San Francisco and I was uh, really sick with a lot of stomach stuff that wasn't diagnosed and couldn't, we couldn't figure out. And so I did all these other things. And then I went back to yoga. And so my practice shifted from uh, more of a, an asana base to more of a, a breathing practice, more pranayama practice and um, restorative practice. And I feel like yoga gave me my life back again. And then when I had my baby, I did a whole different kind of yoga. And then I had my postpartum and I was a crazy lady. And then I did a whole other kind of yoga and more meditation. And so it just kept like being right here. It just kept showing itself to me. And, uh, and I, I always think that, um, I don't know, it's, it's almost, I was re so resistant initially and it just keeps showing up. It's like, it's there for me like time and time again, different incarnations and helps me to, to grow and not be so crazy. I feel like yoga has always been a creative outlet for me and the practice of teaching uh, isn't so much of a, a performance, uh, although I, I do come from a dance background, it, it, uh, it's and I come from a stand-up comedy background, and so there's this sense of really being in a, in a room full of people, reading the room full of people, and, and I, don't, I never really show up with a plan because I don't know who's going to be there. So I kind of get a feel for what's going on in the world, what's going on in the room, what's going on in their bodies, in my bodies, in my bodies, because I've got so many bodies and so many people inside my brain. Uh, and I just sort of, we come together and it's a conversation. It's not so much a performance or I'm up there trying to like, you know, make people be something they're not or feel something they're not, but just to open up a, a space where they feel safe to laugh at themselves, uh, to cry, to uh, bend over in public. That's silly. Um, and, and a space for a grown-up nap. It's important to have a grown-up nap. So it feels more, for me, it's an energetic exchange, which is like yoga talk for... It's a conversation and relationship and a community. And I'm fortunate to have a studio that I can call home and, and practice with really like my tribe, my family, and people who are there every day showing up on the mat and showing up on the phone and uh, at my house. And like it's, it's, uh, it's connection. It's not performance. It's, it's not fake. It's real, real. So I took on Yoga Loft. I took over uh, my friend Genevieve's studio probably eight years ago now. It's all a blur. <laughs> it's all a really happy blur. Uh, but I had been uh, working in, in gyms and uh, working uh, creative programming and teaching and I was working for the man and I was done. Like I had my daughter and I went back to work and I was like, I'm never gonna work a full day again in my life. Like I can't fake this. So Genevieve was selling the studio. I was 
like ready to step right in. And uh, so it was this beautiful transition, somebody that I cared about in a space that I cared about and, and wanting it to stay open. And it's hard, it's a boutique studio, you know, in the world of uh, a lot of yoga. Uh, and so it's a beautiful ocean view space and I took it over and really I didn't take it over, it took me over and it, they took me in and it's, it's, it's changed my life and uh, I'm so grateful for that space and it was a lot of work but it's worth it, it's totally worth it. What has been amazing uh, through this process uh, is really recognizing, like for me, yoga is, uh, it's funny and it's light and it's uh, open and honest. And over the last, um, I don't even know how many years I've been doing stand-up and, and teaching yoga, uh, I've found that for me, the real yoga, like the om, the vibration, is a belly laugh. That the, the sh what is, I think Alan Alda says, the shortest distance between two people is laughter. And I love MASH. So, um, <laughs> and it's so true. Like, it's what connects us. It's what humbles us. And just, like, we take ourselves so seriously and everything's so heavy. And so the, the outlet of teaching yoga and this is the same as, as um, talking to people, right? And connecting with people. And that's uh, what stand-up is, uh, is that conversation uh, with a lot of profanity for me. But um, there, one of my, like, the, the greatest, like, medicine I've received from the practice um, was the opportunity to, to go to Afghanistan and to teach the troops. And I was teaching yoga in the morning and I was uh, doing stand-up in the evening uh, with, uh, armed with laughter. And I thought initially, like, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to teach these guys some yoga and these gals some yoga and I'm going to... And I was totally f afraid to go. and. Uh, and when I got there, I realized, wow, like they're giving, it's for, like they gave me so much healing and so much awareness. And uh, it's amazing what, it's amazing the level of suck that they lived with over there and, and how just present and uh, kind and supportive. And like just to look at really what it's like to, um, to stand for each other, and and that's why when I meet people and they're new to yoga, and or the, you know people always say I can't do yoga, I can't touch my toes, and I usually say, well, can you like lie down and breathe? Can you snore? Because that's yoga. If you can uh, just walk in the room, if you're open-minded enough to walk in the room, then that's your yoga. For me, when someone says I can't do yoga, I can't touch my toes. I can't stand on my head. Like, yoga is not about standing on your head. It's about standing together, standing up for what you believe in. And, and so I think that's what stand up really, you know, is in a, in a sense for me. One moment that really stands out, and there were so many moments of teaching and, and being um, on the mat with these um, folks, I was amazed at how many women, how many moms, the first woman I, the first person I met, like the commanding officer that I met, was a woman with a, I think, 15 or 16 year old daughter, Tammy. Her name was Tammy, and uh, Tammy was the boss. And I was, I was just amazed. Everyone showed you pictures of their kids. Everybody would get their phone out and show you a picture of their kid. And I was just amazed at how brave <laughs> these people are. And and what a blessing and what a gift and what a privilege it was to, to show up for them. And it was, so it was the women. And then when we got on the plane to actually go into Afghanistan, we were um, at a, another base. And then uh, when we got on the plane to go to Afghanistan, we were just us and a bunch of Marines, which sounds like a really good time, <laughs> always to me. Um, but they were, 
all just exhausted and they were sleeping, but they were sleeping with, they had their rifles and so they were sleeping on the plane, which is really just like a cargo like thing. And they're sleeping on their rifles, like literally taking a nap with their head on a rifle. And they were, they looked like they were 12. You know, they were so young and I was just like thinking that that's someone's son, that's someone's husband, and that's um, just the reality. You know, we're, we're so privileged. How has yoga informed my parenting? There is not enough yoga in the world to be a parent. Um, no, you know, I... My girl is my yoga. My daughter is yoga. Like, it, she's the teaching. She's the heart. Uh, she's the purpose. Um, it doesn't get more yoga <laughs> than that. Um, I think as a as a how it's informed my teaching. Being pregnant was gnarly, and I actually. Uh, had eclampsia, so I was, um, I had crazy high blood pressure, and everybody's like, you do yoga, you'll like have this natural birth, and you're like earth mother, and you'll like, you can have a baby standing on your head, and, and guess what? <laughs> like, that, none of that matters. Um, I was prepared, you know, I had like my, my birthing ball, and all the, you know, all these things, but uh, yeah, that baby's gonna find a way out, and none of it's gonna be pretty. And so yoga really uh, helped me because, like, I if if it were not you know if I was not in a modern society, I would not have lived through childbirth. Like it was that gnarly, and then I was pretty sick when I had her, and I was sick for a while after. And uh, getting back to my practice, it's just yoga always like gives me my mind back. Some when your body's possessed by a small alien being and you have a child, you wake up like, what happened? Like, this uh, is a long road back, but that's why you step on the mat. Practice, patience. In, in teaching uh, new teachers, or even, really, it's new students. Like, I don't, I don't, you know, this is a path of integration, and um, so I don't really separate, even in teaching and teacher training, like, I think I'm going into teacher training, not as the teacher, but as, again, someone who is, is learning and growing and um, wants to be part of something um, and wants to, to dig a little deeper into my, my personal practice and share what I'm passionate about. Like, it's, teaching is just sharing what you love. So when you're teaching teachers, it's, it's even more uh, fulfilling because they're, they're already stoked about the process and, and they, and they want to be in this, um, in this sense of discovery. So in teaching, like, uh, you know, uh, how, to, how to teach asana or whatever it is, it's really like you're teaching individuals in a group setting. You're teaching individual hearts and minds and and egos, and you have to meet people where they are, and you don't always know where that is. So um, as a teacher, there you take in a lot of energy, and you have to be able to stand up in the front of the room and, and, and know that, okay, this person um, just had a baby. This person um, has a trick knee from an old football injury. This person... Uh, is just really sad today or lost someone. And this person uh, has a broken, I've literally had people come in with a broken hand to like a level three vinyasa, you know, and, or I've had someone with a prosthetic come into class and it's each person came into that room for a reason. And you don't have to know what it is, you just have to kind of like hold, hold them in, in the process. So yeah, learn your, shit and no you know right leg left leg but like know that these are living breathing humans and that they came there to feel whole and nobody walks in the room because their life is going so great they walk in the room because they're human beings so you're not teaching 
um, a demographic, you're teaching a human being, and you're, you have to be human in that process. So for me, that humanity and that is is being a little lighter, being uh, giving yourself permission to to not know and to to be silly and to laugh together and to um, to learn from your students. Like you're not you're not a teacher, you're just a human. As far as uh, my teachers, yeah, I want to shout out to my folks, to my parents. Those are my teachers. Like yoga is not what happens on a mat. Like, it's not somebody who taught you how to do a handstand. It is uh, that person who taught you how to dig a little deeper and um, have, yeah, uh, amazing yoga teachers uh, like my daughter, like my folks, like my friends, my family. Uh, and, and I really want to give a shout out to Yoga Loft Manhattan Beach. What? because they hold it down and they hold me together and yoga's everywhere and you just have to let it in. How do you know your practice is working? Are you breathing? Are you alive? Did you wake up for, you know, to enjoy another day? Are you nice to people? Are you loving? Are you generous? Do you do silly, kind things for absolutely no reason? Uh, I, I, I don't know my practice. I don't know if it is working, but I'm going to keep trying. Like, what else are you going to do? Just keep trying. <laughs>